All right, we got everybody. Lauren, you're there. Gabby, you're there. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So, hi everyone. I just wanted to introduce the the topic today and uh, the reason why we do these. And the topic today is how to get over the mid-season hump. And I had a player actually from Croatia who is, um, she actually got admitted to a university in Virginia. I'm very proud of her, Natanya Levak. And she wrote me on, on WhatsApp like, hey, can you tell me what exactly is a mid-season hump? A mid-season hump is basically in sport or in work, it's like if you have a long project or a long contract and from start to finish there's going to be these humps and you know valleys, mount, like highs and lows. And so basically it's talking about the lows that come during your season, um, whether that's abroad or in your own country, it doesn't matter even if it's a three-month season or an eight-month season like it is here in Europe. And so what we're going to be talking about today is ways that we have either come across these and what we've experienced and then ways that we've been able to get over them. But also what I want to hit upon is some players actually never experience these because they handle some things and, and I think that those things that they're doing we can replicate. So. I am Ryan J. Owens. I'm a professional athlete. I've played for Team USA. I've been playing pro since 2002. And I started a podcast called Beyond Athletic. Uh, you can go check that out at beyondathletic.com. If you're on the Google Plus link, um, you will see links for myself, for one of the speakers that's going to come on, Therese Crawford, for Gabby Cueva. And unfortunately, Lauren White is on, but she hasn't had her pro page yet, but we're going to be working on that. Right, Lauren? Right. Yeah. So uh, what we're doing here is we're talking to athletes, student athletes, it doesn't matter, pro athletes, and we're just trying to give you some advice. So what I want to do is let the girls that are on, Gabriela Koeva from Team Bulgaria and currently playing for Telecom Baku, which is formerly Rabida Baku. They're in Champions League this year, and uh, I'm going to let her introduce herself, and then I'm going to let Lauren introduce herself, and they're going to have about a minute or so to talk about why they're here and why it's important to them. Go ahead, Gabby. Uh, so, hi, everyone. I'm Gabby Koeva. I'm from Bulgaria. Um, I've been playing professionally for uh, more than eight years now, and I play right now in Baku. Awesome. And this topic for you, it's important and why? It is important because usually I face really long seasons and sometimes my uh, national team season and my club season overlap almost. And I, I spend several years, um, around four or five years uh, without a break almost. For rest, so you get this mid-season and beginning of the season humps or however you call them. It's not easy to stay on track, stay focused, and uh, perform on your highest level all the time. For me, it's important that we're having this conversation because I think we can uh, share what we've experienced with uh, other athletes that maybe are struggling with this right now, and uh, especially because few years ago when I experienced that I had no idea how to deal with it and now I'm better with ma managing these situations. Awesome, thanks so much. And uh, Lauren, I'm going to let you introduce yourself, uh, where you're from, where you're at and why this is important for you. Go ahead. Alright, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Lauren White. Um, I am from Cleveland, Ohio in the great country of America. Um, I am currently playing for Azur Yol Baku, so Gabby and I are in the same city, um, and our teams have played each other a few times. Um, this is my first year playing, so I'm a rookie, um, and that kind of goes into why this is important to me. Um, not only have I kind of experienced this mid-season hump that we're talking about, um, so I've found some things that have worked for me to get over it, um, but also I'm a student of all of this, so um, I'm really interested to hear Gabby and Ryan, like your advice, what you do to get over these things to help me for the future. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lauren. 
All right, so while I sip on my coffee, <laughs> I'm like trying to get a, a mid-afternoon wake up right now. Uh, I do want to apologize. I'm still figuring this thing out, and I had Gabby, your face was just plastered up there since the beginning until you finished yeah. your intro. But hey, great job. The smile does <laughs> wonders. <laughs> okay. So great. if I disappear from the screen, everybody, it's just because I'm like putting my coffee down and picking up my yogurt and blah 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 because we're athletes and we gotta maintain that, you know, energy and recovery and all that stuff. So all right. Ooh. I don't want to keep going. Therese Crawford is joining, so before I go on, I just want to see if, if she goes live. <laughs> Actually, we'll wait a little bit. So today, talking about mid-season mid humps, I wanted to throw out there one good example of a player who actually sent me in um, a couple things that have happened to her. This is Arielle Wilson, or Ari Wilson. She goes by short. She played for Penn State. She's a four-time champion there uh, in the NCAA, the top league of college sports in America. And she struggled a bunch during, um, oh, Therese has two kids, by the way, you guys. So if you hear something in the background, that's what it is. <laughs> and I'm going to try to mute it right now. Anyways, so Therese Crawford. I can't mute it, so you guys are going to have to handle it. So what Ari was saying is there's two, two ways that she, she came across some issues in the past. The first way was she said, my body was very tired, and it played a huge factor in this mid-season hump physically and mentally. This is something that's really important is that we attack everything from the physical, mental, but even more social and emotional aspects of what could break down during a season that could lead to these lows. And she goes on to say, so I try to make personal goals I can obtain so I can make sure that I'm playing my best until the end of season. For example, making specific awareness and exercises for parts of my body that are tired and weak. Excellent example. And number two, another thing, is getting tired of being around the same people every single day with like five exclamation points. So what I find helps me is having someone from America come over to Italy. She's in Italy right now playing in Vicenza, a city I actually lived in, wonderful little city. Uh, she has someone come over to Italy for a few weeks, boyfriend, family, so she can enjoy some time with them and take a mental break from seeing the same individuals she sees every day. So I wanted to give that example. Why? Because first, you're going to see that things might break down because your body is, you know, I mean, it's not always going to be able to operate like a machine even though we want it to, right? And so what I would like to do is hit these two things right now, and Gabby, I'll let you talk on this first, but the, the body aspect, and I know that you definitely do a lot to maintain your body. You have some things that are going on right now and Lauren, you're going to come into this too because I know you've had some things go on and that you're currently getting over. And we'll just talk about how we can manage those things and move forward. So Gabby, why don't you go ahead and talk about that a little bit more, body and where you're at and what's happened so far like this season or in previous seasons and how you've gotten past it. Um, this season particularly, I have uh, um, patellar tendonitis which is not uh, that bad, but it's been causing some problems lately. And what I do to handle it is uh, I, I go swimming every free day I, I get because it relaxes my body, helps my back and my shoulders and my, my hips and, and knees. And it's important to know that all these things are connected. And I need to work on all of them to help uh, recovering my knee. Then I go uh, to my physio, our team physio, I do therapy. Um, and I am spending a lot of time doing exercise and preparing for practice and uh, cooling down after practice. I have all these uh, foam roll and mobility and stretching routines and, routines and also um, 
some exercise, eccentric exercise for my quads. So this is what I'm basically doing now. But um, talking about uh, level of performance and how this affects me, I have to say that this is a really a, a, a very big issue for, for me. When I have some pain, some problem physically, I think about it. I really overthink it. Um, until I feel better, until I do something and make sure that I'm not just sitting there waiting for it to go away, to pass, I, I'm not calm. I can't perform. I can't... Um, I just lose something in my um, motivation, maybe. I see. And why don't you, before we move on to Lauren and your examples, I would like to ask you really quick, these things that you were doing, right, so these things uh, in warm-up, in cool-down, and actually while you're playing because you have to monitor, right, what's going on and say like, okay, this is a level whatever out of 10, and if it hits this point out of 10, I've got to say, for instance, to myself first, A, it's time to back off, or B, it's time to stop because this is at a maybe like a breaking point or a critical point, and at that point you've got to talk to the coach. And so warm up during training matches, whatever, let's just talk about training for now, and then cool down. Just give us one ex specific example of something that you do that you think might be one of the most important things. Uh, are we talking one of the most important things for patellar tendonitis? Or <laughs> yeah, for, for exactly, for your situation because okay. everybody's going to have issues with their knees and whatever. So. All right. So first thing to do when you go in the gym is uh, foam roll. I, I roll all my body, but your legs back and front and make sure you have good mobility in your ankles and in your hips because uh, restriction in your ankle and hip mobility usually causes uh, the need to absorb all the differences in the angles when you move, when you jump, when you land. And this is a huge pressure on your, on your joints when you land from jump. Then stretch really well um, your, your quadriceps and work on stabilizing your biceps and your, your hamstrings, muscles, your glutes and biceps femoris, how it's called, your hamstring. So mm -hmm. that's basically the most important. Awesome. Thanks. And I would just like to jump in there and say something really quick before, Lauren, I let you take away. When you're warming up, there are way too many experts and way too much research showing that if you do static stretching, which means you're stretching a muscle and you're holding it for an extended period of time, let's say more than like a second or two or three, you're actually lengthening that muscle, you're stretching it out, think like gum, until the fact that you can see like little holes in it. Think that way. You're basically making your muscles weaker. And so before, I just want to be specific on what she's saying with stretch out and do all these things, you want to do a dynamic stretch, something that moves you through the full range of motion. So like you would do a lunge and go all the way forward and rock all the way back. You just want to move things around. So really important to... Uh, to think about things that way. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree absolutely. Plus, the dynamic stretching uh, can be also performed with uh, just several seconds of holding, like three, four seconds, and then rest the same time and then stretch the same time. So they, they must be equal intervals of time, but not like holding for two minutes. For sure, and you definitely can look up dynamic stretching on YouTube, find some people who are doing it so you really understand what's going on. All right, so thank you, Gabby. Lauren, why don't you take it away with uh, some things that you found that happened to you that might have slowed you down already this season in terms of your body and then how you're managing those or have managed those and try to get as specific as you can, okay? Yeah, so to start off, just in general, um, it's a long season. It's not like your college seasons where you start in August and you're done by November. Um, it's a eight-month season for some people, and I'm just about at the end of the sixth month now. Um, so it's definitely been a journey for my body, um, figuring out how far I can push it before 
it goes kind of over the edge. Um, I've always been someone who really likes to do extra workouts and that's when I feel my best is when I'm constantly pushing myself in both uh, cardio and weight training. But it's been uh, a difficult journey to find a good equilibrium um, between how much I can do outside of volleyball and then how much you know I'm able to do with all of the training. You know, sometimes we have four to five hours worth of training every single day. So um, I just to reiterate what Gabby was saying, I think foam rolling is awesome. Um, I do that before every practice and after most practices as well. Um, and then dynamic stretching for sure um, is so important. Sometimes I even just try and get on the treadmill or the elliptical for five or ten minutes before practice just to make sure that my body is nice and warm going into our training. Um, in terms of some stuff that set me back now, um, in early February I came down with a pretty bad ankle sprain um, that I'm still working to recover from. Um, it's been something that's really frustrating for me because I've been very, very lucky with injuries in the past and have never really had anything that's kept me out this long. Um, but with that being said, uh, every single day I've just been rehabbing it back. So uh, I do physio with our team doctor, um, which includes some like electro stem. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, that's where you basically put these little pads um, near some sort of infected area that you want to put electrodes into. Um, then you turn on the machine and and it will flow energy through your infected area. Um, also we have uh, some Normatex sleeves which is just uh, compression in your legs which is really good to do whether you have an injury or not. Um, so I like to try and do those at least two times a week. Um, and then I do a lot of rehab on my own for my ankle which is just taking a band and trying to get as much movement as possible um, early on, working a lot of um, compression and elevation, just trying to get as much movement back into it as possible. So by now, I'm back on the court, um, still not quite 100% full um, with jumping and lateral movements, but working on it and hoping to get there in the next couple of days. Awesome. Thanks so much. And what I want to talk about a little bit before we move on and, and see if Gabby has something to chime in about this also is, let me turn off presenting mode. My bad. So emotionally, we have to talk about what's going on with us emotionally during these times where our body isn't at 100%. Because when our body isn't at 100%, and we're trying to do something at 100%, this can start to affect us mentally, and part of that mental issue that could arise is that our emotions can get into things, and we could say, oh my god, but I really want to play, and then you'll push yourself even harder. I know Imani, one of the players that I work with through Elite Volley Agency, she's in Germany, and just after she had hurt her hip in the beginning, she was just like, oh my god, I just want to get back. And so what I did was, she's a rookie, I said, hey, here are some mentors, some, some athletes just like you. Some of them are a little bit ahead of you in experience. Some of them are a lot ahead of you. Why don't you talk to them about their past experiences and maybe it'll help you calm yourself and figure out a plan of action. So Lauren and Gabby, uh, I'll let Gabby, you chime in first and then Lauren, why don't you back it up after she's done. But uh, just talk about emotionally how you manage yourself during these times, especially when it's hardest on your body? Uh, well, a few years ago, uh, it was really difficult. I didn't really know where to start. Uh, and I'm talking particularly about a couple of seasons I played in, uh, in Switzerland, in Volero, Zurich. Um, well, emotionally, mentally, for me, all the situation there, all the surrounding was really... Um, really hard, really frustrating, and on top of that, I am, I kind of come back recharged after uh, after a Christmas break or something. When I see my family, my friends, 
And in Switzerland, we didn't get this break because we were playing, actually hosting uh, Top Volley Basel International Tournament, which is a really high-level tournament with teams from Brazil and Russia and, and Turkey and like, really, really elite teams. Um, so there was no way we were going home. The tournament was held between 27th and 29th of December. And so around Christmas holidays, we were actually preparing the tournament. And this period was really hard on me mentally. I, I felt really drained emotionally. Something of what A uh, Ari Wilson said, what you uh, read from, from her message, that seeing the same people continuously, and if you don't get that few days break, it's just so... What happened to me then was I had some trouble sleeping because I was so emotional, and I am emotional in general, but I was overthinking everything, just um, wh whenever I'm not performing uh, my best during practice or game, I would continuously think about it the, the night after the day after, until I get back to the court and do something different, something better, I would just be so hard on myself. And what I decided to do then is try and calm myself down somehow. This is this was my first um, uh, time discovering meditation. It was not actually what I'm doing right now on a daily basis, but I was doing a few times per week, uh, just listening to some... Um, soothing music and just trying to sit calm in peace, close my eyes. Uh, and I felt that helped me in a way, but right now better. And I, I can't say that these emotional moments don't arise anymore, but I am definitely trying to handle them as soon as I feel something is happening and not let them get too deep. Thank you. So, Lauren, why don't you go ahead and chime in on that emotionally and like how you've been able to handle this and any things that you might be doing really to balance that out. Yeah, so uh, like Gabby said, um, it's, it's difficult and the Christmas break uh, definitely allows you to go home and kind of recharge. My issue was I for the first probably week and a half to two weeks that I was back from Christmas in Azerbaijan, I almost got into some sort of like depressed like state. Um, I was just really unhappy um, and kept questioning why I came back and what was going on with me and I just fell into kind of a mental rut. Um, and then slowly I started to work my way out of it um, I started focusing on myself and stopped comparing myself to everyone else on my team. Um, and that helped me in practices to just work on the things that I needed to improve. Um, and I also started doing some meditation. Um, I took Ryan's 10-day challenge which was awesome, and then kind of continued my journey afterwards with an app called Headspace. Um, and so I've really enjoyed the calm and serenity that it brings you every single day. Um, it can take a very stressful situation and allow you to think about it in a rational way or just calm yourself down. Um, and that's kind of a lot of what I leaned toward when I did get hurt um, because I was feeling in a really good place mentally. I've been struggling with uh, kind of getting my head right all year and finally uh, at the end of January I felt like I had come to a good place mentally and I was ready to take on the second half of the season. Of course then I go down and get hurt. Um, so that's been something that has been an ongoing struggle to make sure that I keep uh, positive and continue with the things that I've been doing before that got me into a good place mentally. Um, but it's definitely always a struggle. 
Um, and so I think the little things like meditation, um, I journal every day, um, things like that uh, can definitely help you get out of a mental rut. Yeah, I, I love that you just mentioned those few things because why I love it actually is because I know that we work together and we've been working on these things and trying to build up basically your transition from amateur status in volleyball to professional. And I know specifically for you, going from you know volleyball in college and then no volleyball really and then some volleyball you know with PVL and whatever getting back into it and then coming abroad and now all of a sudden being a bench warmer which is in essence exactly what you are and it's we're in the same situation actually because <laughs> I put myself in the same situation this year also and uh, it's been a struggle but these things that you're talking about uh, with the 10-day challenge I, I'm gonna put that actually in the the show notes uh, section like anybody looking at this there's a showcase and there's a Q&A if anybody has questions while they're watching just go ahead and ask them in the Q&A and we'll try and hit them up in the last 10 15 minutes that we're talking and then I will put that challenge also in the showcase that so anybody watching live or after the fact you'll be able to click on that and while I'm talking about that just to catch everybody up we're talking about how to get over midseason humps uh, basically lows in your season and we're talking about how your body just tiring out and injuries can play a role in that and how to get past it and specifically how your emotions and mind can tie into that so we were talking about right now the the mind aspect right and emotions and so Gabby I know you're gonna have some things to say about this also and Lauren you will too but I was listening to a podcast today and I wanted to see oh my gosh what is his name He's the third richest guy in hip hop in the world. So if we're thinking like probably is Jay Z first, and then probably Kanye's crazy self. Uh, <laughs> second, Russell Simmons. This guy actually is like one of the grandfathers of hip hop and rap and all of this, and he is a multi-millionaire, maybe billionaire at this point, and he's a vegan. And he's actually, uh, he meditates a ton. And so he said something on the podcast today, and I ho I'm hoping I can see this right now, but I can't see it because I wrote it in yellow. I write things on my window in like little markers, so don't think I'm crazy, but it's how I stay organized. He said that the world is, or, or the world itself is not, uh, is not like the problem. It's how we perceive it that creates problems. So basically like if, our, if we can't train our minds to take stimuli in and say for instance okay that person is doing that same thing again that I could either perceive as annoying or as whatever it's them it's just what they're doing and it's not me uh, that is how we either create problems or we create peace within ourselves and we're able to continue on so I just wanted to mention that if you haven't already implemented some kind of mental training into your life, that you should definitely do this. Um, and the 10 day challenge is a great place. And if you don't do the 10 day challenge, try Headspace out. Lauren, Gabby, and I are friended up on Headspace. You need to be friended with us too so we can check each other out. Um, Fun. So. Let's talk about another thing here. Let's move on. So we talked about the mind. We talked about the body a little bit. There's some other things that I wrote down. Uh, let's just go over body, mind, people. So the same people. So one of the solutions for that could be, you know, getting people to come visit you or you going out and meeting new people or trying to get on Skype sessions, doing things like this, interacting with other people in your situation. Um, and then, let's see, environment, your place, where you are. It may be new to you. You may not have ever been there before. So getting used to it sometimes. I know that in Greece, for instance, I used to do this a lot where I would take a different way home every once in a while. So I'd run across things that I hadn't seen. And i go, oh, that's kind of cool. I never knew I was there. And then maybe I'd go check something out. So uh, Gabby, is there anything like that that you have advice for people out there that might have, let's say, that issue of the same, the same people in your life every day. And 
although they might be amazing people, after every day together, twice a day, sometimes more, traveling for hours or days together, it can get pretty intense. And you could just need something else. So any solutions for uh, people, maybe new people in your life, connecting with people back home, and then environment. If you can't change your literal environment, uh, you can't leave your country, Azerbaijan, because you're signed there until whatever time, that you can get out in that city and somehow do some things. Uh, well, what I do, for example, is I try to connect with somebody who is not on my team. Like in this case, when I have other uh, teams, uh, girls from other teams here, I can try and connect, and this season it worked out well for me. Uh, but, uh, for example, when I was playing in, uh, in Switzerland, in Zurich, we were the only team from Zurich, so that was dif different different situation. Um, I was lucky my last three seasons in Turkey, in Istanbul, huge city, amazing city. And uh, when I transferred here, it was uh, a little bit, in a way, similar but very different from how crazy Istanbul is. And so when I felt I was getting uh, tired from seeing the same people over and over again, uh, because our our training schedules it was really really tight. I mean, we were having double sessions three four days in a row, and you you don't have power to do anything else or will to. But in my free day, um, a couple of times in the beginning of the season, I was very unfamiliar with the city. I have to start with this. I went out. I took I took the metro and went out on the first station close by the sea and I walked for one and a half hour just straight direction just walking straight by the sea um, trying to explore and feel a little bit um, the city so this helps for me it distracts me uh, it helps me feel more comfortable more at home and not so much uh, abroad and this is, I think this is something I should do in the beginning of the season. Like, from, from the moment I arrive, I should just dive in and, and explore the, the new places because this is definitely helping. Yeah, thanks so much. And Lauren, do you have anything that's helped you there while you're in Baku? You're muted. There we go. There we go. Um, do you, uh, do you hear uh, an echo going on? Yeah, all of a sudden there's feedback, so I'm not sure why. All right. Well, anyways, Gabby, maybe that was it. Okay, that seems better now. Um, so yeah, I kind of experienced the same thing that Ari was talking about with just kind of getting sick of the same people. Um, and so one thing that I found that's helped me is just setting some time each week or each free day or, you know, whenever I, I get a chance to just kind of have my alone time. Um, I honestly really enjoy just taking myself out to eat and, you know, having a dinner for one or lunch for one. I know that sounds somewhat pathetic, but it's time where I can catch up on myself. Sometimes I'll bring a book or journal or I'll just walk around, but making sure that I have alone time for me um, whenever I get a chance has been key in the second half of the season. I didn't really do that in the first half, and I could feel um, by the time Christmas came on, I was like, oh my gosh, I need a break from these people. I see them for eight hours a day. This is ridiculous. Um, and so I started doing that in the second half, and it's really, really helped me. Um, as far as getting to know where you're at, um, that was sort of difficult for me and still has been. Um, Azerbaijan is very, very different from anything that I'm used to, um, and there's a huge language barrier. And so it's been a struggle to find things that... Um, kind of remind me of home, but I think that when I do find those that 
that um, has been key for the past six months. Um, just little reminders, whether it's a restaurant um, that serves more international cuisine or just finding someone that speaks English that you can talk to and have a nice conversation with. It's like the little tiny things that just remind me of home um, that have really helped me think of Azerbaijan as my home. Ah, and Ryan's telling me to define sick of people. Um, just when you spend uh, a lot of time with people, you begin to, little things that would normally not get on your nerves start to get on your nerves, and you just get annoyed um, a lot more quickly than you would normally get with the, sa with the same people, and you may be best friends with these people and absolutely love them, but if you spend enough time with the same people, it's uh, it can just take a toll on you, and so that's what I mean by getting sick of people. Awesome. Thanks so much. So uh, I want to take a moment to just let everybody hear from Therese Crawford, who joined the call now, and let her introduce herself and just give a little bit of background on uh, where you're from, fly over the national team and where you've played highlights, and uh, why you think this topic is important. And then I will let you actually continue in to just give a really good example of a low that you had during a season and how you got past that. And welcome, sweetheart. It's great to see you. Oh, my goodness. OK. So I'm super excited that we're talking about obstacle. Did my camera just go out? Nope, you're good. Oh, okay, because I don't, I don't see myself, but that's okay. Um, because this has been an obstacle, but luckily I've been listening the whole time, so it turned out to be a good thing, because uh, I could hear and I couldn't talk, so that mean I re means I really had to listen. Um, but mm -hmm. I am a Therese Crawford, and I played professional volleyball for ten years. Um, I played for the U.S. national team for eight years. I've lived in eight different countries. I played in six different countries. I that's enough eyes, but uh, so I I definitely there's one more eye. So I definitely uh, experienced the midseason hump, but I think it's bigger than that. I think also that the midseason hump is just an example of an obstacle. So listening to everyone talk, I just like to kind of summarize it and say that you know we have to see it for the truth of what it is, and so. People were talking about how they got over physical humps. So Gabby was talking about with her tendonitis that she figured out what it was all about and how to heal herself. And Lauren was talking about her ankle. And what she did is she figured out different things that were necessary to do to get over it and to make it better. And then we were talking about the mental part of how you get over the mental hump. Uh, the mental hump and that's what we're talking about now. But my thing is just um, to recognize the truth of what it is. So whether it's physical or mental, what exactly is bothering you. Get to the truth of it. Because once you understand the truth of it, then you can decide how to attack it. So um, if it is something physical, like you have tendonitis, then you need to go and figure out for yourself, because you're a professional now, or even if you're not, you need to go and look it up now. There's no excuse. You don't have to go to the library anymore. You can Google it. You can find out information about what's the problem with you. Then you go and attack it. Now you know exactly what the problem is, and you can figure out a plan to go and attack it and to make it better. That makes everything a little bit easier rather than just seeing it as some vague thing because how do you attack the hump? What is the hump, you know? And so we can't really attack it and, and deal with it if we don't know what it is. But once we find out exactly what the hump is all about, okay, if I'm, that's what people are talking about meditation. When you're in meditation, what you're doing is seeking what is the real problem? What am I really dealing with here? What you're allowing yourself time to just sit and understand what's going on, to be intentional about your thoughts, to recognize what's coming in and what's going out, to, to be intentional about it. And then you're able to see what you're really feeling, what you're really dealing with. Once you understand that, then you can decide, is it something valid? Is it something that's real? Or is it something that I'm just experiencing because of something else? Then we attack it. If it's that you miss your family, 
okay, well, if I miss my family, if that's why I'm feeling down, if that's why I'm stressing out, then I'm going to be intentional and make time to see my family because that's going to help me feel better. I'm going to make time to make Skype dates with my family. I'm going to make Skype dates because now I know that that's what the big hum is all about. But if it's just a hum, we don't know what to do. You can't attack what you don't, what isn't there when it's just a shadow. So you need to find out what the real problem is, and you can do that through meditation. If it's a physical problem, you can find out what the real problem is, and then you can attack it. Good deal? Great deal. Love it. And why don't you give people a little background on le and let them know that we all experience these things. So what specifically in your career can you just remember? What comes to mind first? As it doesn't have to be importance-wise, but sometime you had a hump or a right. slump, lump, or whatever, and how you got over it. <laughs> well, actually, uh, let's see, I can think of a couple. I can think of a physical one was a back injury that I had, and um, what my rehab for that was was a lot of, toward the end of my career, was a lot of uh, recovery. So I learned, uh, I, I took all of the experience that I had had, so when I was in Russia, we did sauna. So I took some of that. And when I was in uh, the national team, then it was ice. And so I took a little bit of that. And so uh, we had a great recovery center at the, at the training center. And uh, I was able to go and do sauna and ice and then sauna and ice. So I found out what the problem was, that I had a bulging disc. And I found out that if I stretched my hips and if I stretched, you know, uh, different parts that I could release and not have the spasms. Um, and then a mental part was during the end of my career with the humps was not playing, you know, and uh, being fearful because I had no idea why I wasn't performing the way that I knew that I could perform. So at that time I had no idea what was going on. So I didn't really conquer the hump so well. I just uh, decided to look at my teammates and encourage them because I that's that's all I knew how to do. I didn't know what was going on and why I was not performing the way I, I knew that I could. Now that I know, <laughs> and now that I can encourage you all, is to recognize that you don't have to compete against anybody. That you have to know, when we're athletes, we think that we need to go and that we're competing constantly to be the best against somebody else. We constantly compare ourselves to somebody else. And if we're better than so-and-so, then that makes us a better athlete. And we think that that's what it's all about because we play a game that only one person can win, which I understand. But you have to know when you go to play the game that you'll never be able to compare yourself to somebody else because you're you and there is no one other than you like you. So if you're the only one there is, how can you com where's the standard to compare yourself? When you understand that there's only one you, that there is no other athlete that can be like you, that there is no other volleyball player that can play like you can, then you can focus on yourself and making yourself the best that you can be. Then that pressure to be the best is only better than you were yesterday. That's only you. And if you're injured, there is no big pressure to get better because all you need to do is make yourself as healthy as you can so that you can perform your best. You don't have to be better than so-and-so. There is no such thing. You'll never be better than her being her. When you're comparing yourself to somebody else, you'll never be as good as that person because that person's being them. You can never be them. So as long as you're just being you and the best you that you can be, then, you're, then you're, you've already got it. You're already doing yeah. it. Yeah. I do love that. That's great information. And it reminds me of what we need to go into next so that we spend the last 10 minutes talking about uh, our goals and really writing things down and the actionable things that we can do to prevent or get rid of these mid-season, beginning season, end season, doesn't matter, humps, slumps, lows of any kind, okay? But what I want to do first, and I totally forget this because when I, when I do these, I start to, uh, and I should probably put present to everyone for me, <laughs> Uh, I start to forget that I, I have these experiences too. And so I want to share what's going on with me uh, right now what I, what I will and why I actually did this. And one reason was a few players came to me at the exact same time talking about emotionally, physically, socially, something. One of these four aspects of health and the four pillars of health and what we try and teach to the younger kids in our mentorship sessions and whatever is that there's... Uh, emotional health, social health, so your 
interactions with other people. Um, there's mental health, your mind, and then there's physical health, and that covers everything from eating, sleeping, working out, all that kind of good stuff. This season, I have realized that I put myself in a situation where I was going to be challenged in a way that I had never been challenged before in my career. I accepted a job knowing that I wanted to get back into high-level volleyball and knowing I needed a little leeway somewhere where people knew me, where I had excelled already, where the country was relaxed and I knew I'd get paid and I knew I'd have nature for my little guy who I don't know where he is, but uh, I have a little Boston Terrier, so don't think I'm crazy or it's a person. It's not. Uh, I, I put myself in this situation and I realized that my goals did not align with the team's goals in some areas, but other areas they did. And so what I had to do was detach my emotional state, my emotional response of, oh, why is this not working? And say, well, how do I make it work for the goals that we have aligned? Because we can't be the same. And like Therese said, we're competing against other people, but we're not competing to be better than them. We're, com we're competing to be better than ourselves. And that's what you always want to be doing. You want to be always continually trying to improve upon yourself. And how we do that is through focusing in on our goals. And so one of the things I did, and we're going to go into this for the last 10 minutes now, um, is writing out your goals. On, on my window here, and I'm not going to show it to you because I'll look like a madman, I have life goals, and I have specific, measurable, positive, inspiring, displayed. Those are questions. And you could go back to SMART goals, which they use for business, which are, are your goals specific, measurable, attainable? Uh, I think it's relevant, um, or you could say realistic. And then the last one is time-bound. And so I have life goals, volley goals, business goals. So I've separated my goals for my entire life because as an athlete, I also run my business and I run these projects and I've got to keep everything aligned. And the moment I realized that everything went wrong this season when I hit my low was when I, had, I didn't have these things in front of me, that last part displayed. My goals were locked up in a corner way away and I just lost track of it day after day, little by little. And so what I want to talk about, and we'll bring it back to Gabby because she hasn't spoken in a long time, sorry about that, uh, is what, what methods do you use to set goals? What are their importance to you? And how, how do you do those? Like how do you write them out? Do you put them up? Do you um, look them over every week or daily or monthly? How does that work for you? And, and do they work for you is, is the other question. So Gabby, why don't you take that away? Uh, I just so so much information uh, that I wanted to share now with uh, with you starting this bringing up this subject because of uh, a pod podcast I was listening these days, and there are several things. Like one of the things was about setting goals. Like I like to wake up early, so setting goals like writing down a couple of things that I need to do today, and starting with the thing that I definitely need to do. So I'm trying to get this one done as soon as possible throughout my day. Um, but about this podcast I was telling you, I think it was one of the CEOs of um, Disney, I think, some kind of manager, like a big manager over there. And he was telling something about reversed goals, like what's your final goal and then like um, separating different blocks, time blocks, and then arriving to monthly, weekly, daily, like what do I need to do today to achieve my goal for, I don't know, this season, this year, or next 10 years. So this is also a good strategy. I haven't tried it yet, but um, it's a little bit difficult to measure any of my goals right now in this way, like um, the example that I was giving was kind of, I don't know, um, money-based probably or financially I uh, was viewing this aspect. But anyways, uh, this is reversed goal setting is also a nice thing to do. But me, in my case, I'm definitely writing down my goals every day and I'm writing down what I'm grateful for every night. So this helps me stay on track also and stay humble.
Brian, you're muted, by the way. Wonderful. I see that. Lauren, why don't you go ahead and talk about yours then? My bad. So, yay, Gabby. I have a gratitude journal as well that I write in something or multiple things that I'm thankful for each day. Um, I mean, it, it's just a nice reminder to step back and look at the things and the people that shape your life. So that doesn't really go into goals, but um, it's just, it's, it is humbling. Um, in terms of goals, uh, I remember Ryan asked me earlier in the season, he was like, hey, send me your goals. And I sent him a bunch of goals, and he was like, these just, they're not smart goals, basically. So they, they weren't specific enough um, was the big thing. And so then I kind of asked him, I was like, well, I don't necessarily know um, how to measure my goals when I don't have statistics. So like he said earlier, I don't get a whole lot of playing time. Um, so I was like, I can't say, you know, any of these goals based on my game statistics because I don't have them. Um, and so then he suggested to keep them really simple um, and make them based off of practices. So for example, I need, if I'm uh, making a passing goal, I can say I need X number of perfect passes out of Y serves. Um, and if I don't attain it, then sometimes I give myself a little consequence to do either right then and there, after practice, um, and it just keeps me accountable. Um, so for my goals, at least for my short-term goals, um, this season I've worked on just small things that I can keep track of myself at practices and see, um, you know, I'll write down goals for the week. And then after the week up, then I go back and I reflect on them and see which ones uh, I still need to work on and which ones I have uh, kind of mastered. In addition to that, um, I have this big document where I've come up with a bunch of keys for each skill in volleyball. Um, and I look at that each day before practice and try and pick out a couple of keys that I'm going to work on specifically for that practice. Um, granted, it's not really a, a super measurable goal, um, but it helps me stay focused. Um, and then after the practice is done, when I'm journaling, I go back and reflect on it and see how far I've come during that practice. Um, but then I also think that it's important to have like midterm goals, which I would say are for the season, um, if we're talking a volleyball or a sports-related um, type of goal setup, and then also long-term goals, which are for next year or the years to come. Um, you can make them five-year goals or two-year goals um, or just for the next year. But I think it's really important to have short-term, mid-term, and long-term. Awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, actually, I want to turn it over really quick to Therese for just to talk about goals and how they've worked in your life, but keep it to about a minute, and then I want to wrap things up because I do want to respect everybody else's time and keep this to about an hour, so maybe we could stretch it to about five minutes after the hour, which means we have nine minutes, but Therese, why don't you take it away? Okay, really quick. My goal every day is to be me. <laughs> it's to free myself from all of the pressures of doing anything else but being me. So that means if I'm faced with a challenge that I don't shrink back from it. But I'm going to be me and I'm going to be me in that. So that's what my goal every day and that leads me toward bigger visions and dreams that I have. Those are big things that I have but the way that I get to them is not to necessarily make out a plan for those, which is good, but this is the way I do it. My thing is every day that I, in every situation that I encounter, I'm going to do my best to release myself from any thing that I have in my head of how it's supposed to be, but I'm going to react in that moment, free from all of that, and be me. There you go. Just a minute. Did I? We hear, oh. we hear you, Reese. Just keep talking. Nope. Do you hear me now? Yeah, just keep going. Okay. So yeah, so that's that's my that's how I uh, 
release myself from any pressures because when you set goals sometimes then if you don't achieve it then you get that punishment we feel that because we're athletes so we want some kind of punishment but that that doesn't help us that doesn't increase us that just takes us back so are you guys hearing me we hear you just keep going okay. sweetheart so so yeah so my thing is just to release myself from that and to act in the moment. In the moment, I'm going to be me, the best me that there is. And that's enough of a challenge for me every day for me to achieve my goals. And then in doing that, my goals come to pass. And that's okay. it. Thank you so much. So what I want to do now is I want to go through everything uh, that we've talked about. Let me put this back on myself. So I want to just give a review, and I want to say before I do this review, anybody who's been watching, I hope that you, you retweet this out, that you Facebook this, because the links that you have, the way, however you got here, are going to allow people to see it recorded after this ends live. So make sure that you do share this with people. Um, and uh, some of the things that we talked about, Goals, make them specific and measurable. Uh, I have attainable, realistic, time-bound. Uh, Therese just said something excellent in the way that uh, I need to figure out how to... Therese, can you mute your side just really quick up there in the, the little bar? Just quick mute. And then what you want to do is you want, you want these goals to to be something that you really can attain. So you don't want to say like, uh, I want to be an Olympian next year and the Olympics is in four years or, or you know, in three years. Like it's impossible to attain that goal. You want something that's realistically achievable um, for your short and midterm goals. Even if you're not writing them down, but just to know in your mind, hey, I could get here realistically and if I don't, I need to reevaluate my goals along the way to make sure that if I'm not on track for these, I change them up a little bit so that I can try to attain it or get as close to it as possible or push that date forward. But you don't want to give up on something unless you absolutely know it's not achievable. Uh, I like to have a motto. My motto when I made the turnaround this season was be a monster. Uh, my job is to be a point scorer. So like for instance, my motto last time I was in Finland was high and hard, all the time. When everything's were going good or bad, I would just say to myself, high and hard, high and hard, high and hard. And it was implied that I'm smart during these actions, that I'm blah, 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 but I was thinking about attacking, reaching high and hitting hard. Um, I also have another thing that's called my reminder every day, and it's in front of me. I put it in my car, I put it in my mirror, I put it on everything, and it says, shift gears. So don't stay in one gear. Sometimes I need to shift back a little bit. Sometimes I need to shift forward. We talked about habits and routines. Ladies did a great job of talking about some of the things they do, like the, the mental training with headspace, with just the meditating or breathing every morning, journaling. The goal setting is part of that whole thing. Accountability. Uh, I know that I use several accountability partners. Uh, Gabby and I were doing accountability for our mental training to make sure that we stayed on top of doing it daily. And so if one person does it and they post in your group between the two people or however many people, I did this, the other people were like, oh, crap, I didn't do it. I'm going to do it. Um, I have a weight training accountability partner. I have a goal accountability partner. I try to get accountability in my life for both internal and external sources. Uh, we talked about change environment. So, girls, I want you to, to wrap up at the end if I miss anything. But change your environment. That could mean, like, if you're always in the house, like today, I almost put my sweats on and went out to the cafe, which I do every day. And I was like, Brian, what? Throw on some clothes, feel good, go out, you know? And it actually made me change my mood. It not made me change my mood. It just instantly changed my mood. Um, also, get out. Explore your city wherever you are. Go on dates with yourself, like Lauren said. Hey, I love it. I go to movies all the time. People are like, eh? what? Gratefulness. Be grateful. Say it. Write it down. However you want to do it, think it. It doesn't matter. Being grateful and, and making sure that you're, you're appreciating what's, what's been given to you and what's around you and just yourself is, is vital to us moving forward. 
learn new things, uh, whether it's learning a new language, uh, learning a new skill. Uh, Gabby's getting back to her artistic side. She just started a cooking blog. It's in the showcase. Click on that link. Um, Therese started a new project called Connect With Your Gift. That's in the, the link also. She's making sure that she teaches people how to figure out what their gift is and how to connect with it, obviously, and move forward. So you got to check both of those out if you want to cook or you want to take pictures. Gabby is great at putting that stuff up now from day one. And uh, Therese is doing this other thing. And then connect with people. Connect with people, whether it's through Skype, whether it's what's happening them, whether it's going out and talking to random strangers, obviously within reason. Don't talk to crazies, but connect with new people. It's important. Connect with new people on your team. Ask them questions that lead to things that you might not know about them. Um, you'll see people in a different light. And then create balance in your life. So ladies, last two minutes. Uh, if you have something to say, just raise your hand up so that I can unmute you and then just take it away for about 30, 45 seconds, and then we'll wrap up. Waiting for hands, waiting for hands, waiting for hands. Reese, you are the winner. All right, I unmuted myself. Okay, so just to wrap everything up, realize that the hump is, uh, just to call it a hump, you need to identify what it was, what it is, what's causing you stress, what's making you upset. Identify it. Find out what it is and then find out the truth about it. Then you can attack it and find out how, uh, you know, if it was something that's not real, then we, we find out the truth about it and the stress, the depression, all of that goes away because when you find out the truth about a lie, a lie doesn't continue. It ends. So you'll have relief because you found out what the truth about it was. Thank you so much. Who's next? And Lauren, it is you. You win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think the big takeaway here um, is just really looking inside yourself um, and asking yourself questions and pushing yourself mentally um, to see what things make you happy um, because once you find out what makes you happy and you start doing those, um, it makes any issues that are going on in your life a lot more easy to deal with. Um, so if you have some issues with the mid-season hump in volleyball, find things either inside volleyball or outside of volleyball that just really make you happy and go out and do those. Um, and then I think you'll find that hump is a lot easier to deal with. Rad. Thanks so much. And Gabby, your closing thoughts. Uh, my closing thoughts uh, for all the professional athletes who are listening to us or are going to watch us later. Uh, remember, first of all, when you face some difficulties and mid-season humps or whatever, remember, first of all, to be grateful for the gift that you're given to be actually doing what we are doing. We're playing professionally abroad. We, we have an amazing job that almost all of the time is our uh, hobby and the thing that we love to do. So enjoy it and just don't let any kind of emotional obstacles uh, get you, hold you back from, from performing your best. Wonderful. And uh, to close off, a few things just to chime in on that last little part. Uh, notice what those emotions are like Therese was talking about and, and attack them through, you know, journaling, talking to other people, meditating. You will really find some solutions, but you won't find solutions if you don't try something new if you don't challenge yourself, if you don't get outside of your comfort zone, you've got to get a little uncomfortable, not a ton uncomfortable, just a little uncomfortable to make progress and move forward. Don't ever forget that. So make sure you click the links in the side. There's a match coming up live tonight. My girls that are watching in America, if you weren't watching, I'm quizzing you and I will know. Uh, there is an excellent match in Champions League with a mutual friend of ours, Barrett Kaufeld. She's playing against an Italian team, or no, they're playing in Switzerland against Valero Zurich, right, Gabby? Thumbs up, yes? Yes, yes, yes? Totally, yes. I can't see a thumbs up, but it's, it is that. And I put that link in the show notes or the showcase. Uh, there's a link to Gabby's new blog, which you've got to go check. Try out that quinoa. Uh, there's a link to Teresa's website on Facebook. Make sure you like that and check out what she's doing. And then Lauren's going to have her site up soon so that you can connect with her on her journey and watch her the rest of this season and then into next season. And then for 
everybody to connect with me and Beyond Athletic and Elite Sports Students. Just make sure you click the link in the side. If you want to take that 10-day challenge for the, the mental training, the breathing training, go ahead and click that. If you want an accountability partner, feel free to email Facebook, whatever the messages were proved, where you proved that you've been doing it, and I will send you mine because I do it every day. And I thank you all so much. I wish you a wonderful afternoon, and please share this with at least one person that it made you think of. So, ladies, you're all unmuted. We can all say goodbye. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you, and I'm grateful for all of you. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Ryan. Bye. Ciao, ciao.